Hi there. Hi there. We're recording the podcast <laughs> right now. What's up, Rick? Okay. Hey. Hey, thanks for your answer, <laughs> sir. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, if, but I, 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 I ran them off pretty quick, so. <laughs> <laughs> They're perfect. Or like number four, Zach? Haven't gotten there. We just read one. Oh, I can't wait to read it. Just, I can't just, wait to I'm read scared. it. I'm scared. I'm terrified. But, yeah. Well, he, read, read number four. I want to see it. <laughs> well, I'll, do you want me to just, like, keep you live and put... Well, no, because I need to read off my phone. Yeah. Well, I'll send, I'll send you the podcast as soon as I finish editing it so you can see it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rick. Love you. Right. See ya. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you got you got a Stanley. You joined the team. I got the Stanley, a nice pink Stanley. I'll and be. It, on, that's not. That's not actually his Stanley. Okay, this is. Not, is this Emma's? That's Emma's. Yeah. She's okay with this. I mean, I didn't ask her. She's got like four. Thank, of them. <laughs> thank you, Emma. Sarah has two, and I officially bought my first one. Yeah, Emma's got four. Um, but also, welcome Blair to the party tonight. Yes. Hopefully she'll just lay down and be quiet here in a bit. But yeah, Emma's got four of them. And then I took that one on a video shoot a couple weeks ago. And I was like, gosh, dang it. Now I have to buy my own. But feel it. Feel how like. Yeah. Oh, I like that. It's like the mat. It's It's like rubbery. Yeah. Feel like you're petting a dolphin. I dedicated like hatred to the Stanley Cup just because it was an expensive cup. I thought it was a trend. Well, and I mean, then, it still is, and it is. It is. Checks and, both of those boxes. Uh, Sarah has has a couple, and I was blown away with how cold it kept the That's water. So nice, and it tastes really good. It's in the cup holder. Uh, Do you have the handled one? Yes. And it's like it's just yeah. it's the unspillable it feels one. Feels smooth too when you drink it. Yeah, it feels like the way water should be. Yeah. I'm so disappointed in and myself. And this episode is not sponsored by Stanley, <sighs> but it can be. Yeah. Stanley. Why not? Why not? delicious oh yeah how was your how's your uh day week been so far um it's been good um work's been a little uh crazy it's getting busy but good in a good way um yeah yeah nothing nothing too bad that's too much um quinny is teething at the moment Ooh. just got her third tooth in so you know how those nights are uh not great. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we we just kind of ignored it. What's that? We just ignored her when she <laughs> cried. So I, that sounds bad. It sounds, really it sounds bad. <laughs> okay, that you're in pain. But this kind of, I mean, again, this goes back to what? Last two weeks ago episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Of like sleeping, sleep training. Like we knew that if we got up and started holding her and everything like that, like it, she would just continue to want that yeah so honestly if we did anything we would we had these little pills um i don't know exactly what they were emma could tell you but like and i don't even think it was medicine like i don't know if it was just like numbing pills or i don't know i don't like people are gonna be like what the heck is he talking about we have this thing that we give her when she's teething and it helps really like and you just pop two in her mouth and yeah like dissolve i don't know if it's like sugar or what yeah but the sleeping pill, dude, <laughs> legit. I have no idea. I found it was like, like there was one night where she was teething. And it was like, here, give her two of these. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. We give, we give Quinn a medicine too. It's so funny how quick we are to just trust the fact that it's, it's a ch- children's medicine. You know what though? <laughs> My parents put like whiskey on our, yeah. Oh, gums. like rub. I've heard rubbing like rum or whiskey yeah. on the gums is like extremely yeah. soothing for the baby. Not opposed to that. So, we got, go. we got some up there. We could do it now. There you go. For us. Rub it on each other's gums. Yeah. And get yours, you get mine. <laughs> this podcast is Dude, taking it's a weird the, it's turn. It's the Stanley's talking, bro. I'm gonna say. But yeah. How's work been? <clears throat> uh busy, but good. Yeah. Um we um so Adam started this week. Or yeah. no, la- last week. And it, he's like he's my superhero. Like he he's still learning the process, yeah. but just having them th- him there, I feel like having somebody there that cares as much maybe as I do. Yeah, like I know there's people that care, but like, uh, but like, like they're at the plant, just knowing he's there helping me and like 
relieving a lot of load off my back. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's nice. Yeah. So it's been good transitioning, uh, him, um, teaching him about the process. Like he was very much like I was like, came into this, had no idea about stone, right. like uh, anything. So thankfully we're able to walk side by side through that process. And, um, it's been good. It, it's, it's been really, really good. good. Um, but yeah. Yeah. How about you? Uh, it's been a good week. Um, yeah, it's been, it's, so it's actually, it's encouraging because it, we're finally starting to pick up with the business. Yeah. Like, I think I told you a while back, like we, you know, up until May had made like less than $5,000 with the business, yeah. which is terrifying. Um, and we're finally like starting to get some jobs. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, super, super thankful. Honestly, I'm, I'm very thankful for how God worked it out. Like I was, we were at um, the farmer's market and I ran into uh, a guy, um, who, oh, you know, Joe, Joe Northick. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I had done some work for Joe in the past and I like, ran into him and he asked how things were going. I was like, honestly, man, if you got any work that you can send my way, like I would love it. Um, and within a couple of days, like we were talking to, you know, pretty decent sized projects. Really? So, and both of That's them. That's great. Yeah, and, and I got both of them. So super excited. I'm actually going to be driving all day tomorrow driving to different like pole barns in, down near Indy to take some like drone photos and really? like, stuff like that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So dude, that's cool. Glad I'm, I'm excited. So, yeah, but I was also saying today was, I, I'm like, this is the first time I've sat down since like 3 PM today. Yeah. Like Amelia woke up, went and worked out and like had to rush through it. Yeah. And then we went straight to downtown New Haven for, um, flag day ceremony because levi was doing the pledge of allegiance okay um which was funny he was like he's like i hope i don't forget it can you imagine dude well because think about it. it's like it's one of those things you just know but when you yeah. think about like okay what is the pledge of allegiance yeah like you yeah. kind of are like am i gonna forget this yeah you know it's really a little embarrassing but like it makes sense i don't know what my wife's phone number is Oh, I struggle with Emma's. Because what happens is I almost just we, said had, it, but I was like, we, I we both had iPhones podcast. when we met. Yeah. I just punched her number yep. in, said Sarah Rocket at the time, and never had to look at the number yeah. again. And then I've been asked a few times, okay, what's your wife's number? And I'm like, let me just pull this up. And Sarah's like, you don't know what my number is? I'm like, no, do you know mine? She's like, yes. I'm like, I, I, Emma I Holmes, well, I won't say this. Emma knows my number, I think, because of like Panera. Yeah. <laughs> like she used my Panera yeah, account yeah, with yeah. it, but. Yeah. yeah, honestly, the only phone I I think I have hers mostly down. Uh, I I always double check it. Yeah, but like I think I could get I think I could get if I needed to. Like if I had to call her and didn't have phone, like I could get her on one or two tries. Yeah. Um, the only one I know for sure I have memorized is my dad's. I have my dad's too. Yeah, and my grandparents' home phone. Wait, no, do I? See, it's one of those things you gotta think about it. Nope, I don't know that one. I do know I do. <laughs> Okay, so it's my dad's, and then the phone number for uh, Emo's Pizza in Alton, Illinois. 618-466-4499, I think. Yeah. Well, there you go. Give him a call. Give him a Where's call. Pizza? Only so, in Illinois. Okay, so tonight's episode, we're doing a little bit of a fun, fun thing. Um, so we thought for Father's Day, because this is coming out uh, a couple days before Father's Day, we would text each other's dads mm -hmm. and ask them a couple of questions um, and then read the responses live. So you texted my dad. Mm -hmm. I texted your dad, which we texted three of the same questions. And then we each texted a fourth question that neither of us knows about. Yeah. So we know three out of the four questions. Oh, geez. But we don't know uh, the responses of our dad. So Josiah is going to read... My dad's responses. I'm going to read his dad's responses. Yeah. And, and I will yeah. say, I, I received your dad's text messages <laughs> 10 minutes ago, so I haven't read we your... Were like, we were like, I was like, what are we going to have to do? Like, Well, in, in his defense, I told him about this like a month ago. 
Yeah. And then forgot to follow up with him until a week ago. Yeah. And he's been on a cruise this past <laughs> week in Alaska. That's so, great. So, like, he's been busy. No, oh, yeah. Like, he oh, flew he's... home today. So I'm like, <laughs> woo, right at the nick of time, Ricky. Yeah, no joke. I like so, it. I like it. But, yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll read your dad's first. I'll read one of your dad's and then we'll just go I back am and legitimately forth. so nervous. But That'll be good. My dad just texted me. Just sent my answers to Josiah. Did a real, did real quick. Didn't thoroughly proofread. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> We're recording the podcast now. <laughs> Hi, Zach's dad. Yeah. Um, okay. I got I to gotta find your dad's number because I didn't save it. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So the first question was, uh, what was the most eye-opening thing about being a grandfather that you didn't realize you'd experience until you became one? So, and your dad, for context... Were your kids his first grandchildren? Yes. Yeah, so Colin, Colin, and Noah okay. came first. Uh, my brother had a daughter, uh, Reagan, and okay. a Quinn. So okay. yes. And so for my dad, it was my brother's son Oliver, and then Amelia, and then my brother's son <coughs> Benjamin, and then it'll be Milo. So um, your dad said, uh, "I didn't expect." to be as proud as I am of Josiah watching him father and seeing him and his children. So happy, even with struggles, he continues to amaze me and how well he handles the grandkids. His love for them is a beautiful thing to watch. Oh, wow. Dad, (laughs) make me feel like a superhero over here. (laughs) Yeah. Which one of us is going to cry first? Oh man. Yeah. I didn't realize my dad is, is is very much like that. Like he, this is how he expresses love. Yeah. Uh, in forms of just saying I'm proud of you um, and things like that, and it does it doesn't shock me that that's how that's what he said, but it also it means a lot yeah. knowing that he recognizes those kind of things. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, because he knows, because he knows, just being vulnerable. That's what I struggle with. Like he's my go-to person when I'm whenever I'm struggling with anything. Yeah. And it's so he gets to yeah. see like a deeper side of things. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um. And he's had to reassure me of those things, you know, because I feel if I, if I like, there were moments where I just felt like the way I was acting was affecting who I was as a father. And then I was being a terrible father and he had to reassure me that I wasn't and things like that. Um, so that speak, that's, that has always spoken a lot. Um, so yeah, it's good stuff. This is gonna be, this is gonna be interesting. This This is is a good, this this, is fun. This is good. This is good. It's like, I'm a little terrified of the answers, but also like very excited. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. You're gonna have to send me his responses. Yeah. I want to remember those. Same. Um, just get my face to unlock. Yeah, but you got, oh, there we go. I'm trying to read away from your mic. Oh, he was just, he, he just (laughs) responded. Josiah, dot, dot, dot. How is this? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> great uh this is great rick <laughs> thanks thumbs up in real time there you go oh, rick you're goodness. awesome so question one was what was the most eye-opening thing about being a grandfather you didn't realize you'd experience until you became one and uh, oh man it's not even my dad and i'm all like <laughs> choking up man uh how much my two little boys had grown up so fast as I said at each of their weddings, one minute they were playing youth soccer and baseball, then graduating high school, then college, then getting married, and what seems like all in a couple of years. And now they are fathers and homeowners and independent and successful at work and home. Seeing them with their sons and daughter as dads brings me to realize they have truly grown up into the into men into men and into fathers. Gosh dang, he got me teary eyed. Dude, it's dang. Oh, he's oh. He's so good with, like, encouragement like that. Yeah. Like, I remember, it makes me think of um, of my wedding. I'm literally teary-eyed right now, like, from that. Um, it makes me think of my wedding because he, we asked him to give, a like, a toast at our wedding um, because Emma's dad did, like, a prayer and everything. And uh, he, like, did this whole elaborate toast talking about, he titled it Zach and Emma's Big Adventure. And it was like the one of my favorite toasts I've ever heard. Um, and it's one of those things like we don't have it recorded. Like it, it wasn't recorded by the the videographer. Um, and so it's like, I'm like, oh, I wish I could have that. Yeah. But like, yeah. I, oh, that's just super encouraging. Yeah. 
And it's cool to think about like my brother, like him saying that with my brother too, because I know my brother watches this yeah. every time that it comes on. So yeah, it's kind of like Eric, you're getting a little bit of a message too. Yeah, there you go. But, oh, <laughs> that's so encouraging. Yeah, um, he just responded. <laughs> I love your dad, dude. So I said, this is great, Rick. Thanks. And he responded with, so now what happens? Hang on. Can we just like FaceTime him real quick? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, my gosh. I wonder if we can like, if, see if he's going to actually answer. Hi there. Hi there. We're recording the podcast right now. <laughs> What's up, Rick? Okay. Hey. Hey. Thanks for your answer, sir. I appreciate you. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I ran them off pretty quick. So. <laughs> They're perfect. Yeah, Are they like number four, Zach? Haven't gotten there. We just read one. Oh, I can't wait to read it. Just, I can't just, wait to I'm read scared. it. I'm scared. I'm terrified. But yeah. He, well, read, read number four. I want to see it. <laughs> well, I'll do you want me to just like keep you live and put well no because I need to read off my phone. Yeah. Well I'll send I'll send you the podcast as soon as I finish editing it so you can see it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rick. Love you. Right. See ya. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Oh, Ricky. That's amazing. Oh goodness. Blair, you're being obnoxious, dude. Um, okay. Question two. Uh, so the second question was what do you love? most about seeing your sons being fathers uh your dad said i love that my hang on this is ridiculous blair you need to go chill um he said your dad said i love that my sons will learn a new type of love that can only be understood with having their own kids they will know a sacrificial love that places their family above themselves truly a selfless love yeah wow that's good yeah yeah and it's just, it just goes into like this whole journey that we're doing, mm -hmm. like realizing like we're still young fathers mm -hmm. and sacrificial love is a completely different kind of love. Like you would do anything oh, yeah. for your kids, um, and, but it's the most purest, purest form of love Yeah, because you provide that sacrificial love and they reciprocate it the only way that they know best. And it's just like, I love you with everything that I have. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's really good. <laughs> I mean, it just like, it makes me think of like, it's tr like the way he words it, like just truly a picture of like God's yeah. sacrificial selfless love. Like, to, yeah. like just pure reflection of that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Number two. So the question, what do you love most about seeing your sons being fathers? I love seeing their patience, their full attention, their happiness being with their boys and daughters through all the fun stuff and the not so fun stuff, diapers, cleaning up after they eat. And at the end of the day, they are, they are totally into their children and their wives. Mm. Yeah. That's, I love that he says that. Like it's, it's one of those things like where we're, we don't get to see them that much, yeah. you know? Um, which, so then we're in, like, we're super intentional about like FaceTiming both yeah. my parents and Emma's parents. But, uh, like, just, I don't know, those words, like, the fact that he is still, he does, like, get to see that. And, like, like that's not, like, you want your dad to see you yeah. as a dad. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. And I think it's so cool that he included, like, they are totally into their children and their wives. Like, mm -hmm. this is yeah. obviously we're, re regarding what it means to be a father, but, like, how important it is to incorporate yeah. not only the love that you have for your wife, but, like, the love that you show your wife in front of your yeah. children and things like that in yeah. front of, you know, your parents and, and things like that. Yeah. So that's yeah. good, man. It's good. Yeah. We're, we're preparing for, we're all heading out on vacation with my brother and his wife and kids. And then my parents in like two weeks, um, which by the way, podcast with both my brother and my dad coming. Oh, that's that exciting. I'm so excited for that. Um, but like, yeah, like as like, we've got like this family text and we're like planning different things. And like it's just so like exciting like to to be able to think about like oh what is Amelia and Oliver going to enjoy doing what is Emma and Selena going to enjoy doing and yeah yeah good times yeah coming. yeah All right. um okay number 3 I'm not going to like number 3 my dad is too hard on himself and I'm not looking forward to hearing what you have to say <laughs> I mean I, I think 
you've already touched on a yeah. bit of this in the podcast, but no, yeah. I think I think it'll still be good. Okay. Um, and I think true, like it's it's one of those things, like yeah, it's advice to learn from. Yeah, you're so, yeah, you're right. Um, number three is what do you feel like you could have done better as a father? Um, your dad said, as the kids were growing up, I devoted too much time to work trying to make the family financially stable. Yes, I'm proud of providing for my family, but at times I worried too much about finances and work. Mm. Wow. See, I am like legitimately so proud of my dad and seeing yeah. how far he come because like for the longest time he had this had this tendency when he was trying to um, you know, repent from the ways that he had been mm-hmm. or or things like that, he would like be so hard on himself and so like hateful of the way he lived. And that just, the way he worded that just shows so much maturity and yeah. how he's come over the last few years. And I'm so, so proud of him because he really took it to heart when he realized like, wow, I missed a lot of, you know, like time with my kids mm-hmm. because I devoted to work. And right there, it shows that, you know, he he's recognized that, okay, I'm past it. What I can do now is teach others to not yeah. do what I, what I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's, and that's, you know, that's been effective in my life. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, even like in this message from him, like it makes me think of, like, I feel like I'm in a point right now where I'm thinking a lot about finances and like trying yeah. to figure out, you know, how to keep a business going. And it's just like a, it's like an encouragement of like, yeah, like those are important things. It's important for us to provide for our family, but like knowing your dad's story and like from yeah. how we've talked about it, like when I got this message, I was like, oh yeah, like that's it's good to be able to provide for the family, but it's also like a reminder, you know, from his own experience to make sure that I'm focusing on, on my kids and my wife just as much. Yeah. I mean, definitely more, but you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Question number three. Oh, excuse me. Um, what do you feel like you could have done better as a father? Um, and my father was not a craftsman with tools beyond screwdrivers and a hammer, knew almost nothing about automotive and electricity and plumbing, and as such, uh, nothing was passed to me. I picked up basics and passed some to my boys, but they have learned to supplement via YouTube and such. <laughs> and YouTube is spelled U-tube. That's the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> oh, love it. That is so great. <laughs> Always wish we had communicated better, and as a parent, most of us are or slash were over overprotective. First, let their kids grow and learn by mistake, making mistakes. I probably could have been less protective. They will have to tell you on that. And I think honestly, like hearing your dad say that, hearing my dad say that, and he and like kind of watching, you know, us as fathers, the tendency is to start off more over overprotective. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're, you're shaping, you know, the grounds for your, your home. Um, and you know, that was the way it was in my family. Like for me, like it was, it was rules. Yeah. And now there's one more child left in my family, uh, in my parents' house (laughs) after eight kids Yeah. and there's like no, (laughs) no rules. And I think, I think that's there, that's a natural pattern is to slowly over time. Um, be more not necessarily lenient but allowing freedom yeah um yeah so. especially because like they've been able to like your youngest is it it's your brother right or it's your sister brother my okay, youngest yeah. is brother, like he's yeah. been able to see like all of you guys exactly and through. so he yeah. has learned that but yeah yeah no that's that's funny that he says that like especially about like the craftsman sort of stuff because like like i told him once i was like yeah i mean i know how to use basic tools um but, like, the same thing. Like, my dad was never a craftsman, you know? But, like, I think, like, I don't know. As an encouragement to my dad, it's kind of like he may have – he said, like, he didn't feel like he taught me well. Um, and I think what my dad did was, like, he kind of taught without telling me. And so, like, yeah. I just learned a lot from watching him. Like, and especially, like, as we've been, like, doing different things around the house, um, like, even with, like, yard work, like, there will be times where Emma's like, I don't – I don't know how to do this. Like, how do you know how to do this? I'm like, honestly, I don't know. Like I just watched my dad do it and I yeah. figured it out, I guess. Yeah. So like, you know, I think there's, there's dads out there who are really, really good at explaining what they're doing, like when they're doing it. So their kids learn. Um, and there are dads who 
just teach by like, Hey, watch what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what my dad was. And yeah, you know, yeah. Good or bad. Like I learned it. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Last one. <laughs> so this is the ones that we don't know the question. So, um, I asked your dad, I think the, the, there was a parameter of, is there like, has to have a funny or embarrassing element to it. So that, that was the only parameter given to our dads. Um, I asked, do you have any funny or embarrassing stories of Josiah from his time playing sports? And I, I said, oh, wait, what, what, what was the question you asked him? Any funny or embarrassing okay. stories from your time playing sports? And I said, you know, he's been talking so much about Colin playing baseball. I feel like it would be funny to hear about him playing baseball as a kid. So he said, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> he says, do I wish that I have a good embarrassing story for you? But I don't. Josiah was always intense and completely devoted to his team. He was the greatest asset on his team, on any team he was on. And then he says, but I do remember when he and Elijah would get excited with river dancing. No. Okay. okay we can stop. <laughs> he and Elijah no. used to do river dancing in their underwear. Yeah. Of course, in the privacy of our home, smiley face, thumbs up face, hand clapping, hand clapping, hand clapping. Dad, <laughs> privacy of our home means it doesn't leave our home. <laughs> Oh, can we see this river dancing? No, absolutely. Can not. you do it on Sunday? No worship. Uh, uh, you no, said, you said dancing is a form of worship. That is, that is no, no, <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, I can't believe. You Were said you that. good at it? No. Oh, okay. So it's impressive. Like what no, they can okay. do. It's no. It was not river dancing. It was an attempt to do whatever anybody was doing on the TV, <laughs> and we just so happened to be in our underwear, and we, my mom just so happened to record it. And I, I got to see this and I, we don't have it anymore. It was, you know what? It was on the video recorded. That was oh, stolen. Got stolen. <laughs> <laughs> see so, episode what? Like two or three for that. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe he said that. Yeah. Oh so gosh. basically we, we attempted to river dance and we would do so in our, uh, in our underwear. It's a great story. Terrible I story. It. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to reset this camera. Real All quick. right. Sounds good. I'm going to read it real quick. <laughs> That's the only downside of uh, the setup is that we can't go over 30 minutes unless I get up and hit that, hit that re-record button. <laughs> All right. Hit me with it, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't think of a real embarrassing thing. Wait, what you, oh, what my my question yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's an embarrassing story about Zach? Okay. Um, couldn't think of a real embarrassing thing, but when the boys were little and we went through the neighborhood on Halloween night, we not, I know where this is going. <laughs> we went out with cousins and friends, so they went to doors in a pack of five, six, or seven. And Zach wasn't the biggest of them, so he would somehow edge himself up to the front. <laughs> and when the door opened up, he was quick to let the homeowner know he was allergic to peanut butter, <laughs> and he couldn't have candy or <laughs> treats with peanuts. <laughs> Just in case there was a limited amount of non-peanut treats up hey, <laughs> available. Hey, that's a smart kid right there. It is. He wanted to make sure that he got the non-peanut treats before anyone else got them. Not really embarrassing, but his cousins and pack mates got tired of it and raised him about it. We parents got a kick out of it, but we also got a little <laughs> raising on as us parents were standing down at the end of the end of the walkway or driveway. That Zachary. <laughs> you know what? Actually it's a good happened, though? It's a good technique. Eventually, I learned that just take the candy and then steal yeah. like the non, you know, peanut butter ones from my brother. Exactly. Are you allergic to peanut butter? So I was. I don't know if I still am. I haven't tested it in years. I almost said like fifteen years, but I'm like, holy crap, I'm almost thirty. So it's probably been like twenty years. Uh, so I have no idea. But honestly, I hate the smell of peanut butter. Like I cannot stand it. Did I? So I'm like, I'm not. I'm not even gonna try. But honestly, I thought he was gonna tell a different story with that. <laughs> Oh really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> which isn't embarrassing. There, you know the the rhyme: trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. No, right? I've never heard You've that. Never heard no. that. Oh, we weren't allowed to do Halloween. Oh, I, at least I wasn't. Okay, until I moved out. Is your youngest brother <laughs> able to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's like a rhyme. Like you go up and you ring the doorbell and you start singing. You say, "Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat." Right, but it continues. 
and it's trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. If you don't, I don't care. I'll pull down my underwear. <laughs> and as like a little six year old kid, I thought it was funny. So I said it to someone. Uh, and then my cousin ratted on me and I got like, <laughs> lost all my candy for that year. Oh, man. Yeah. It was not, it was a, not a good line. Halloween. But that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. These were good. Yeah. This was great. I liked, I liked this. I liked it too. I like it too. It just puts it into perspective hearing their side of things yeah. um, and how they word certain things. Yeah. Um, really proud of my dad. Um, he's come a long way and uh, we've come, we've all come a long way. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And <clears throat> like I was legitimately so nervous about that question. Like what could you have done better as a father because of like how much he's beaten himself up in the past? Like there, there have been moments where like I'd say something like, like, Oh, I'm I'm so proud of you, or, yeah. or something like that. And he'd be like, I don't deserve that. Oh, like he would hard. he would tell himself that, and it be, but like the reality of it is like one, all eight of us kids like love Jesus, yeah, and we're raising our kids to love Jesus, yeah. and if that isn't a testament of fatherhood, right. what else is? Right, like le- legitimately, you could put aside all your finances. You could be one of the poorest families in the world, but if your children reflect Jesus yeah. and you see them raising their children reflecting Jesus, you have ju- done your job yeah, successfully. That's, that's the most important thing. So, Dad, A plus, did a great job. Yeah. So, I'd never, I, and, and so I'm really proud of him and how he worded that. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's easy. It's easy to take your mistakes and really let them doggy down or. You can ask for forgiveness, learn from them, and then teach others yeah. on how to be better, yeah. um, and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, do you want to do you want to end it with that question, like the we answer about our dads? What was that? I can't remember. It's like, uh, I don't know. I texted I texted you, but now I'm forgetting too. It was something like just a way to end it for us on like talking about our dads yeah. a little bit more. I think it was like maybe it was like what was the biggest. Um, biggest like lesson your dad taught you about fatherhood like what's the yeah. thing that you've learned yeah it was like what's the thing you've learned best from your dad about fatherhood um multiple things but the one that sticks out the most is i want my kids to feel the same way when i tell them i love them that i feel when my dad tells mm. me that he loves me because i know it yeah. I know it's real. Yeah. Like it's not something like, you know, he's he's forcing to get out. Cause a lot of dads, it's just like not in their nature right. to be sentimental. Um, but the reality of it is no matter how old you are, to hear that from your parent, yeah, it, it means the world. Yeah. And I believe that. I believe that the reason I, my my kids know that I love them with a never ending love is because my dad has shown me that exact same type of love. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. It's always, it's like, it's, it's one of those things where it's always like, it's without a question, you know? Yeah. Knowing that like our dads love us. Um, man, dude, like, oh. I, I just think of like, like anytime be just I like call him and like, it's, he answers the phone and he'll be, he'll say, it's always different. Like when he, when I call him and he answers, it's always like, Hey, Zachy, to which I then respond, Hey, Ricky, you know, or something like, it's always like, it's, it's goofy and silly, but like, it's one of those things where like, yeah, yeah, it's like, I know that I can depend on him. Like, I know that I can, I can go to him and, you know, he'll answer the phone and he'll talk about, you know, fun stuff. He'll tell me about the weather, but like, if I've got a real big problem, like I can tell him about it, even if it's one that he doesn't fully understand or you know, have advice on, like he's at least there to listen. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Dads are awesome. Dads are awesome. I I think I would say the biggest thing like I've learned from my dad is just like sacrificing. Yeah. Like being sacrificial for the family, like, which he mentioned in in his questions, but like, or his answers, but like, I mean, it's, it's one of those things like where like, it's not easy to sacrifice. Like it's definitely a lot easier to be selfish. Right. But when it's for your kids or for your family or for your wife, like, it's just a no-brainer. And I think I've 
like any time now that I come up against that, like I'm reminded of my dad and like the multiple times that he like sacrificed for, for our family, like, you know, working a second job, like doing uh, these like civil war, revolutionary war reenactments, things like that, like to make money to be able to send my brother and I to private school. Um, or even just like little things that he would do. I think the biggest one that always sticks out to me though, is he, um, there was a point after, after I graduated college, I think my brother was still in college. My mom got the opportunity to like go do a dream job basically, um, in Brooklyn. And this is when they were living down in Southern Illinois. Um, and it was like huge advancement for her career. Um, and so they, they asked us like, Hey, what do you guys think about this? Like, you know, mom moving out to, to Brooklyn to, to work a job and, um, or the family moving out there basically. And, um, I remember like my dad, it was at the very beginning, he was working at the St. Louis arch as a park ranger. And he was like, uh, they were doing this whole renovation of like the museum and the park grounds. And he was like one of the key people in like the whole project. Um, and like, he knew that it was important for my mom to like, to take this job. He knew that it was important to, to my brother and I, that like whatever they do, they do together. Right. So either they stay to get, stay in St. Louis together or they go to, uh, New York together. Um, and so he gave up like his wow. big thing, for yeah. her big thing. And it like, it's yeah. just always been one of those things where like, like dang like what a sacrifice yeah like but what like what a way to show your love and your support yeah so yeah what an example yeah nice what work, an example <laughs> ranger rick right Ra- dude that's so cool yeah, my dad was ranger rick so that's great so cool he uh he's he's donating his um park ranger hat to the milo room fund Oh really? Oh, that's Milo's awesome. Room is going to be par- like national park theme. That's awesome. So, like, can we have your park ranger hat? That's great. I'm so excited. I love that. So, well, I think that's that's probably it for tonight's yep. episode. A little bit of a more emotional one for yeah. for us, but yeah, yeah. Happy Father's Day! Happy to Father's all the Day! Dads out there, appreciate you guys. If you haven't, there's going to be a fun video for Father's Day that we have coming out on Father's Day. Is it really? I mean, it's not finished. I'm not. I haven't finished editing it as of this moment, but I'm planning to have it done and post it for Father's Day. I'm so excited. So I'm make so sure you, you check that out. But we'll see you guys next time. Like and subscribe, and yeah, bye. See ya.